Master Hellish here and welcome back to my Open TTD Series 6 Let's Play where here we are in the UK with our sprawling network and now we are making some money. Now uh, last time you saw the operating profit went up. Now you're going to have to wait a couple of episodes to find out if that's going to carry on going up because we're going to start looking at your uh, 2025 game saves. So um, many of you viewers are playing along and some of you have sent your game saves in and I've randomly selected some of them for us to check out today. Now, if you were going to send your game save in, it is too late, but uh, you can still play along and hand in your final save. So from this point onwards, I am now taking your final save. So you have to be on January the 1st. Uh, 2051 or as close as you can get to January the 1st 2051 the end of the game and um, yeah get your game saves for that over to me if you don't know how to contact me go to the website masterhellish.net and there find out all the contact details there but this is my game save to begin with so let's have a look at how we're doing and then we can use it as a baseline for comparisons for the ones we're going to look at today so, there's been a lot of messing around, so let's find out how Whole Beach Factory is doing at the moment. Okay, so at the moment, we are doing just around 9,000 goods. Mm, okay, that's not great, and we're only transporting a small percentage of that. Um, and then, of course, there's the Highland Challenge, Highland Highway Challenge, which we, we haven't really touched since we've done it. We might do something with it. It's just a shame that there's just not much up here in this part of Scotland on this map for us to interact with. There's a few bits over here, so uh, there's an opportunity. Um, down here with Exeter, we kind of sort of given up on Exeter. I mean, we did what we wanted to do towards the beginning, and we did help expand. There's not a massive amount we can do unless we're going to come in here every few days and, and, and click the fun new buildings button constantly. Um, we, we've, you know, we've we've helped it with roads. We've got the transport going and, and all that sort of stuff. But we're at seventy three thousand people, so that's the benchmark we're putting it against. And then over here we've got our new island challenge. Now our island is extremely small. <laughs> but we do have one. Uh, we've got three little islands connected up by a railway with three towns. And I'm sure that will just grow with time. So that's where we are. Let's see where you guys are. First up, it's Gravity Moves Stuff. And we can see here that overall we've got a company value of 2 billion with 1.5 billion in the bank account. So straight away, we know we're quite profitable here. Uh, let's have a look at the, uh, where is it? If we go to finances, no, no, finances, I didn't want that one. Here we go. And the infrastructure, we can see that it's costing this particular company uh, 252 million a year to run their company. We also get a preview about the different sections of railway that they've got. They've got 31 um, units of electrified railway, um, 20,000 monorail, 8,000 maglev, and actually look, we can see that there's some vac tube tracks around here as well, so we'll keep an eye out for that. Uh, and down here at Whole Beach Factory, we are shifting 13,000 crates of goods, and we're doing it with, a I was going to say, a relatively small amount of stations. But then I saw the boats. Look at all these boats. Now this is one of the advantages of boats. In fact, I think it might be the only advantage of boats in that um, when you have boats, they uh, they can just drive over each other like this. Um, you, there's no kind of queuing or waiting or... Like with railway trains, you do have the problem where one train has to wait for the next train and there's only a certain amount of trains that you can get down one line, then you need more lines. Don't have that problem with boats. So boats do solve the kind of, we need to get this from here to here. And it looks like they're just mostly using it as a transfer. Yeah, transfer down here uh, to shift out the goods and just get that station in. So that's all good. Let's have a look at some of the actual layout then. So we've got double depots uh, going in. 
uh, to the stations. You can see there's uh, sets of double depots in and potentially an, an, an out on that one as well. And uh, the one that comes out here, that's a forced double depot. So looks like, yeah, we've got forced double depots on the way out here as well. And we've removed the forbidden bit of track as well. That's that's cool for those depots. Um, that was those ones. But look at here. We've got some um, uh, maglev now. You can see the power of maglev here. We've got uh, a really long train. And they've opted for having two engines on this train. Which um, I, I think is probably you know on the money. Um, and it's a, I don't know how long that train is, but it uh, certainly can carry a lot of stuff. Total cargo is uh, lots of grain, lots of livestock. And it's brought us over to a hub, so let's have a look. I call it a hub because we've got lots of things coming in and out. Um, we've got the industry stations renewal mod with all the different um, cattle and grain and uh, actually I think we've just focused on livestock here um, but yeah okay interesting and oh this bus setup this setup for bus stations um, or, or in this case a truck stop this is actually my favorite way of doing it right now um, having a one-way in and then a three-way split straight into the various different bus stops um, I think this is pretty much the best one that I can come up with, which allows for good transfer. So that is a that's a good one for you to remember, folks. If you want a, a good um, bus or truck stop which can handle a relatively large amount of throughput, this one's good because it doesn't clog up um, very easily. Um, in in like if you just had a, a row of bus stops. It's very easy for the road to clog up, and you can't actually get the trucks into the um, uh, later down the road. Where this, it splits off lovely. So that is a fantastic thing to do. Okay, um, we've had a look at Hull Beach, which is doing absolutely fantastic. It's always curious to see how big London's got. We've got a massive airport in there, which is cool. We probably should have done that in ours. But how big is Exeter? Oh my goodness, look at this. Wow, Exeter is at 410,000. Um, you can see here that we've gone out with the grid. Uh, the grid is a yep, a 3x3 three three grid for the city to grow into. Lots of land flattening, and it's just absolutely huge. Look at that. I mean, we don't, on the smallest zoom level, it's just city. On the next level of zoom level, level, level it's just city. We go out again it's just city um you have to go out quite a few levels to be able to get the whole city i mean that's not even the whole city it's nearly ma it's the one before maximum zoom uh which is cool let's have a look with all this money surely we've had a go at the challenge okay right so it looks like we've gone from the north western part of england here we've got a um monorail which probably was going to be upgraded at some point across the water with some depots which is nice a long, a long water journey there's a few boats around here for some reason and uh, we've got uh, our new town <laughs> and i think that's it so let's just have a look at the world map yeah there we go that's all that's there um obviously fulfilling the criteria there is a town there it's been serviced by transport that is technically enough it looks like yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure if this is just something that hasn't been worked with or whether the money was run out of i'm not sure but it certainly looks yeah i mean it's not an it, like no effort's been made to cre make it look like a real life island um it, it is a square patch there which you know you you do get them in real life man-made islands uh happens a lot in uh, parts of europe uh, i believe not an expert at that but overall obviously doing fantastically well nice clean railway lines oh look at this this uh we've got the um 
this is our what's this one called I, I gave this type of um, station a name where the trains come in down one line they go into a depot and come back it's a force depot queuing station thing because all the trains have to go into that depot and uh, if you've got too many trains coming in they, they usually queue although it looks like there's yeah yeah they'll they'll just I don't know if this last train will go through yeah it will it will go through so you can see now that that trains halfway in the depot there but it looks like this this place turned absolutely fantastic there's um it's it's all going on here it is all going good and um, all the challenges are, are, are being done being nailed the company's profitable what can we learn is there something i'd do better hmm I'm not sure really. There's a lot of good be best practices going on. Lots of double depots all over the place. Um, which is always good. We've got depots on a main line here, but it, I'm not. it's not a main line, is it? Not really. It's not used that much. Um, depots off the main line is preferable. Or, unless you're doing four depots. Don't think us oh yeah here we go here's some depots so these are the humpy depots that we um, sometimes use uh, I like this I like this way of doing depots it's um I think it's good if you're doing forced depots I don't like it so much if you are giving the trains the option of a depot but as you can see here they are flowing absolutely fantastically in fact they're using um, a long train but with three engines Hmm, I'm not sure if that third engine's necessary here, but uh, I could be wrong. Overall, an absolutely fantastic network uh, with uh, great success right across the board. So here we would just, uh, the last thing we'll do, oh, there's been a plane crash. <laughs> I say, great success, people die. Um, so you can see here the overall look, um, a massive exeter, a sprawling network across the country, um, a city over there for an island and that is of course uh, the highway challenge and there's some what's this what is that mountain view highland highway highway i have no idea what oh it's a train depot thing not sure what that's all about but um there we go dual carriageway driving on the wrong side of the road for the UK but I'll let you off <laughs> okay uh, let's have a look at the next one now above the line has sent in Ellison and co here we can see that the company value is just a handful of million and there's no money in the bank account and right in the back of the screen here I think we might have an indication as to why that might be the case we've got vac tubes <laughs> VacTube uh, is really, really expensive, and but it is super fast, and you know you can make some money out of it. You can see there is a VacTube vehicle going along it here now. Um, it just appears to be a single pod in this case, going 800 and something kilometers an hour. I don't know if that's going to make a profit because it's a relatively short distance it looks like it still is making a profit look profit this year profit last year um, I would expect VacTube to just be point to point straight line but you know I guess you can be versatile with them but with that much in the bank account and that amount of property value I'm surprising that they're invested in such an expensive thing let's check out the rest of the network and see what's going on right then so here is the whole beach factory challenge we've got uh, several uh, stations circling the factory and the factory is producing 2,000 crates of goods so there's not a massive amount coming through this factory although it is successfully um, producing Oop, sorry smash the microphone there now there is a little note that uh, for this one we are uh, the game is 2030 so we are looking five years further ahead um, above the line couldn't get a you know didn't get a 25 save oh, I said that's fine that's fine we'll just we'll just take that into account um, so yeah the, the factory challenge it's I mean it's been done well 
Uh, let's have a look at this. So we've got some uh, a nice um, junction here going into the station. The signals are all done in a nice manner, which allows the trains to flow well. This is this is a good station design. Uh, down here, uh, similarly, there's you know there's there's absolutely nothing wrong with that station design. The one thing with this bit I've just noticed is we've got a depot off the line. So you've got this line coming through, and there's a depot off the line. With this length of train, if the train goes to the depot, it's going to still be on the main line before it's got out, you know, uh, it's slowed down. So I'm just going to actually just say, look, go to the depot, to this train. And when the trains go into the depot, they slow down a lot. And the back of the train is now going to slow down here as the train was um, going into the, this, the front of the train was going into the depot. Ideally, you want the uh, this runoff here, or run on, depends how you look at it. Um, we don't want that level of construction. Uh, sort of here to be long enough so that your train, uh, the back of your train is off the line by the time it goes into the depot. Uh, well, that's, that's just a little thing, it's just a little tip. For some reason there's a gap here, I'm presuming that's for a further expansion, yeah it certainly looks like it. Um, let's see what else we've got here. So we've got some designs here, that these designs for junctions, I like them in some ways because they are they're easy and the lines don't cross, so um, one of the things when you're designing a junction is having the lines cross over is is not good for for flow on the trains uh, however with this one it's kind of like the lines do cross because when you've got uh, a train coming around the loop um, to go forward it has to go across this section of track that I've highlighted here in white and if a train is then turning off the main line it also has to go down this section of track in white before it can turn off to the left so you're actually using that, this piece of track here twice like a crossover. So it's not the most efficient junction, although it is an okay junction. Um, it's, it's not one I would use on a busy line. On a quiet line? Maybe, yeah. So um, that's the whole beach and a few other things. Let's come down to London. Oh, look at London. London is huge. There's so much going on if we just go into this x-ray mode. You can see we've got trams going through the city there. The, the congestion down here is somewhat realistic. <laughs> it's it's bad. The congestion down here is bad. Maybe just a vehicle broke down and, and there's been a bit of build up, or maybe this is a bit of a problem that needs sorting out. But um, <laughs> it's, there is a lot of congestion in London. Um, I'm actually planning on going to London uh, for a day or two uh, next month, maybe. Or is it this month? I have no idea. Next month, I think. At some point soonish, and uh, yeah, I'll I'll take some photos and I'll bring I'll bring them back. Maybe I'll get some photos from some trains. That'd be a good one too. Okay, we can see here that not a lot's been done about Exeter, or or has it? Oh, that's weird. Okay, so I haven't seen it like this before. Where Exeter's showing as 102,000 but it looks really compact um, and I'm not sure but I think it's because they haven't done any of the roads to help the town expand or worked on uh, like adjusting the land so the town can't expand out into the hills very easily like the algorithm looking for new places to to put buildings and roads and therefore we've ended up with a very a very dense city look there's very little kind of suburb on the outside uh, you've got tall buildings right up into the edge here which I've, I've I don't think I've seen before so that's quite interesting um, what have we got anything over over here oh my goodness look at this we've got a line of buoys here and yeah we've got an island there's an island over here we've got uh, factories and stuff going on so there's industry on going on over here quite nicely there is a big canal which I think that's a cool idea because if you are going to be designing an island from scratch then putting your own canal in place 
is uh, certainly a good thing. The only thing here that's a pain is I can't see the downtown for the station symbols, signs. And one thing I'm not sure about here is why there's stations that overlap. Like if you look at the, cover uh, the coverage area of this station, it overlaps with the coverage area of that station. Um, for me, that would be the stations being too close together. But I guess if you're going to be getting a lot of things going through there, and you're expecting a lot of high throughput um, later in the game, then sure. Um, and this idea of snaking a um, tram line round and back again is interesting. Hmm, okay. Yeah, okay. And um, let's have a look out here. We've got factory stuff going on. A little bit of land saved around the buildings, presumably in case they want to revamp the building, buildings and stuff. Let's just check how, what happened in the highway challenge. Okay, so we've got a road, dual chat road, some tunnels, some bridges, continuity in the bridges. We've also got a bit of up and a bit of down, and we've actually got a bit of a network down here, which is really quite cool. I'm not really seeing any vehicles traveling on it, though. There's no vehicles. Why is there no vehicles on the highway? Oh my goodness, the highway challenge goes right the way up. Is this a new addition that hasn't got any vehicles? Oh my... What? It goes all the way up here. Um, and there's a station. And if we look at that... Yeah, no no vehicles. No, no vehicles going all the way up there. We've got a big, cool road. Uh, nothing on it. <laughs> um, let's have a look at the overall map for this one. Here we go. So uh, this is actually quite a pattern that I'm noticing in a lot of these game saves. In this, that we've got a lot that comes kind of up the west side of the country. I'm not sure if that's because that part of the country is probably the flattest part. Um, or whether it's because that's where Hull Beach is. Because of the Hull Beach Factory Challenge you need a lot of infrastructure around that. Um, I, I'm not sure about that. Or whether it's because that's where I started and some viewers have decided to do the same. Uh, there was though a nice big railway line from London here, so there is a there's the London station. We come out and the line splits off and goes through Oxford, uh, Rugby, Leicester, through Nottingham, all the way up Sheffield. What else have we got? Leeds. Oh my goodness, this is a long line. Um, all the way up north here to Newcastle. So you can do London to Newcastle on this line, which is quite cool. And then it keeps going to Edinburgh. Presumably Glasgow is where it terminates. Wow. We'll look at the train orders on that one. It's quite a list of orders. Presumably the trains uh, are d on this um, particular line are doing quite well. Oh, they're all quite old. They're all quite old. They need um, replacing. I can see, look, we've got um, London to Glasgow sort of lines here. Yep, they're all they're all making loads of money. They're all making loads of money. Operating profit is is up. It is it is it is all good. I'm really surprised that a line of that length does well with Yeah, see look you've got a few passengers. Well I want to find a train that's coming in. Here we go. Right, train that's coming in. With um what's it called? A uh, cargo distribution turned on. So you can see here We've got um, a, a whole train, and it's got five passengers in it from King's Cross. Uh, and, and why that is, I'm not sure. I don't know. Is it non-stop service? Oh, it's a non. Oh, it's non-stop between the stations. Yeah, of course it's non-stop between the stations. That's that's kind of the default now. Um, okay. Interesting. And uh, one thing though, that station's called King's Cross. I don't think it's in the right place. Right, so if this was real London and King's Cross was in a real in its real position, King's Cross would not be facing west. It would be facing north, and it would be roughly, I want to say about here. So it's kind of on the north, slightly easty side. Um, but you know, it's a big London station that goes to the north, and so is this one. So that's <laughs> that's cool. Right, lots of interesting things to look at there. Um, really dense Exeter. 
not seen that before which this is one of the reasons why i like looking at your games because i get to see stuff that is new to me i mean I, I, here we go look we've got a, a cloverleaf junction here um i think this cloverleaf junction is actually too small for the train so here we've got trains which are length seven really ideally this diagonal here wants to be longer than length seven before that signal and it's not the idea is is that if a train is sat here on the clover leaf waiting for that signal to change the back of the train's not blocking the line behind it um, but it looks like this line is uh, low capacity low usage so it probably doesn't really matter probably didn't even need a clover leaf but i like to see a clover leaf in uh, they're not the most efficient of junctions, but they are quite nice and quite cool and quirky. Um, so there we go. That is that one there. Right, we've had a real good look at two. I, in the past, I've tried to restrict myself and do them quickly um, to try and cram as many into an episode as possible. For this one, I'm taking the opposite approach. So we're only doing two today. And we've got another two next time. And then we'll do a third episode with another two. So if you prefer this slightly longer look at the game saves, let me know down in the comments. And in fact, if you like the quicker five minute ones that I did in previous, let me know. And then when we come to the end of the game game saves, we will do it the way that you guys prefer. So let me know your thoughts on whether you like to take longer looks or shorter looks at people's games. And I will see you next time for the next games. Remember, the next game save I'm looking for in this series is the um, 2051 end game save. Now, if you are, if you haven't started, there is actually time to start playing along, play the game, and submit your game save before the end of the series. Um, so each year takes roughly uh, 13 minutes, and I think the game is. Uh, about 45 years long so it is very much possible um, to get the gameplay in if you want to play along check out the beginning of the first episode in this series and the link to the series is in the, uh, is in the playlist and it tells you exactly what you need to do i think that's it um yeah that's all so uh, take care thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time to have a look at some more 2025 saves bye for now